Vanessa, was that, did you have, was just that the total conversation? It was a conversation to start there or did you have like a larger presentation or thought process around it or? I don't have a presentation prepared. I sent an email to the OCI list maybe a couple days of last week um, that has like a, so I basically went around to a bunch of people at the lab and I talked to a bunch of people that I know that are outside the lab on Slacks and I kind of collected a lot of feedback of like, what would, what would you want for like, you know, for containers, uh, if you could like do anything. And I, I took a lot of, um, I mean, I, I came up with a lot of sort of like ideas and I don't want to discuss those ideas at the meeting, but I kind of want to propose that like there could be an HPC working group because um, it makes sense that this, this huge community has kind of some representation in OCI. And it's not to say that like anything that we, this group would come up with would be accepted. But I, you know, I think it's important to be part of the conversation and maybe there'd be like a new spec or project that came up with. So, but yeah, I don't have a, like a formal presentation or anything. I'm just here. <laughs> no, um, sounds good. I, I guess that I was queuing up this figure a, a time allocation, but it, I hope that that wasn't the full thing. I mean, um, I mean, there has been like the singularity work has been done. I haven't followed up with them recently, but <laughs> way to go, Mike. <laughs> I said I'd do it. I'm in. I like this peer pressure. It's nice. It's good. Yeah, this is a Sorry. better kind of peer pressure. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't have a presentation, but, this. Go for it. but I wanted to kind of get people's feedback about if this is something that seems like it would be reasonable and useful to do. And if that's the case, then I can go down that, you know, I read the TOB PR 99 or whatever it was that talks about the process for submitting a working group. And I can pursue that and I'll go out and I'll recruit a lot of people um, to sort of to join it and we'll go from there. I can share the link to the random ideas document um, if people are interested in the chat. Lots of crazy cool ideas. <laughs> Or crazy terrible. Um, this is um, Shane Cannon. I'm from Berkeley Lab, and I've been on the OCI mailing list for a long time, but I have not managed to make it to any calls. But when I saw Vanessa's proposal, I, I wanted to make sure I, I joined this one. Um, I think that there would be a lot of it. There already is a lot of interest from the HPC community, so I think uh, we could get a good bit of participation. And there's a lot of uh, synergistic groups already out there that are you know, gathering use cases and requirements and stuff like that. And I think we could use that to, you know, to filter down and give ideas to, to the, you know, to the other, other players. Yeah, Shane, I'm glad you came. You know, I didn't, I don't think I've ever seen you. I've interacted with you for years, but uh, so I'll just say it's, it's nice to see you and nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Sort of virtually. I think we met one time at a thing at Boulder, um, but it was like four years ago. Oh yeah, it was like really quick. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think I had more hair than two. Yeah, and Vanessa, this is Brandon Klein with uh, Sandia National Labs. Uh, I'd definitely be helping or wanting to help with you make that happen for us from the OCI side. Um, obviously, like Steve, you said with the singularity. You know, for us in Sandia, I've kind of been our main champion of that since 2014-15 with my colleague John Miner for, for the efforts that we've been doing with cloud and containers at Sandia. And so even like 2015, um, I was the first one to put um, benchmark our one of our supercomputing clusters against a HPC virtualization cluster I put up in AWS with a CFN cluster at the time. And then, um, you know, SG, SG and Slurm, but then I had containerized all that too. And it was still, you know, that was so foreign. Now it's coming back. I, I spent a time at Amazon as well, AWS. But coming back, it's it's interesting to see where the community is and isn't still for the labs as a whole. And so I think you know all, all of us having having a, the ability to help the open community like we love doing from a laboratory side would be really good. Is there an associated special interest group for CNCF for HPC today? Not quite. Um, I'm trying to think of where that might actually live, and it, it 
there isn't really directly within CNCF for that. Um, maybe app delivery would probably be one of the more direct tags for that. There's the research computing thing that has a lot of overlap, but it's not specifically HPC. And this is why we needed more people to be able to answer that question. Absolutely. Yeah. Vanessa, is that your impression too? In terms of like where HPC, sorry, I missed the question, where, where HPC is represented in the industry or? I think it was with CNCF. Was that what you said, Derek? Yeah, I was just, I mean, what it seems like to me, like for some of this working group proposals, it, it, it sounds like there's kind of an overarching kind of what would be in kind of a SIG today to kind of discuss the needs of uh, this particular community um, and then kind of spin out some of these ideas. Like a lot of the, the ideas that, that Vanessa had mentioned here, like each one of them itself could almost be a, a working group. Um, so the working groups as they're defined yeah. today are kind of tightly scoped threads, whereas it's not really designed to like keep a community of uh, interested parties together. Well, it could be if there's an HPC working group, it starts with these ideas and then decides that, you know, that these projects should be somewhere else or they should be in their own separate working group. Um, in terms of, I guess this is a, probably a different question, but what I was thinking, like, I, I think it would be interesting to kind of, and I, I don't have great experience with this, but to try to understand like, when, so when Google tells me that they're having cloud HPC days, like it's not really HPC, but like, what does that mean? And how can we like identify the, the common things there? So that, that, that would be one thing, for example, that I think that an HPC working group would, would look at more closely to try to figure out how we can best work together. What would you say the biggest challenges are today kind of working together in, in this room? I would say it's, well, I don't think that we very commonly like come together and just like have a conversation <laughs> about kind of what we're working on. I, I, at least even within like national labs and academia, it's very siloed. Um, and, you know, we kind of are working, we're, we're, we're doing similar things. So like when you say like work is, so if, if you're running something in the cloud, you're probably using Kubernetes. Um, we also might have a container cluster at an HPC center, but typically we're using like a job manager, but we're also, or a, a batch scheduler, but we're also using containers with the batch scheduler. Um, so <laughs> I guess, how, why is it so hard to work together? Um, I, I, I feel like, I feel like there need to be people in the room from both sides when different specs and OCI are being discussed to be like, okay, is this, is this driving with my use case? And, you know, and what do I have co in common with this? Um, it's something that I just, I think we need to do. I don't, as far as I'm aware, that hasn't really been done. Yeah, I think I, think I would agree that um, there's just a difference in some of the priorities between the two communities. And it doesn't mean that we can't, you know, collaborate or work together. It just means that, you know, that maybe pushes it down the, um, the priority stack at times. I, I think kind of what I'm hearing is there's, there looks like there might be some uh, HPC groups and maybe in CNCF. And I, I think the question is what, what would we do here to help facilitate? Is it like, how do you store HPC stuff? You know, how do you run HPC stuff? Like, what was the, is this the, a way to form a collaboration between the multiple groups? I think that's the kind of the framing of the question. I mean, I, I think it could be a way to foster collaboration, but I think when you kind of think of details, so for example, let's say in the HPC use case, there's, we want, I don't know, metadata about, we want more metadata about layers, something about the layer. Then we would go and we would see if, if there's an ability to, to maybe add that to the current spec. Um, if there's, if a bunch of HPC people come together and they're like, you know, we really need some kind of orchestrator for fetching containers in a batch scheduler. Well, that's like a totally different project, but it, it should be developed, not just like a, you know, like a fun project, but it, it should be made like a standard. So it doesn't just work with, you know, 
slurm and um, sun grid engine, but also like flux, like the same itch. The question is like, do we want to combat this from like a let's make a project together or let's try to better make a standard for the entire community in the same way that the other specs are already standards. So that's how I sort of distinguish between the two, like something being an OCI versus like some other group that works on container or cloudy or HPC things. Right, so you're talking about projects that span the scope from Kubernetes scheduler on down to the host. And we, we do have some projects that are similar to that, 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 that use OCI, you know, to get the specifications done that we need. But we also have to push caps in Kubernetes to make that happen. We're actually making some plugin changes into Kubernetes so that you can do some of these things in, you know, in the scheduler. We is um, our maintainer who's working on the scheduler. I don't know if you work with them yet. So um, I just want to say that uh, metadata is something that I'm working on as well. Um, but I, but I hear what you're saying, Vanessa, because I have to be in uh, several different communities in order to align with uh, applying metadata to the container use case. And perhaps, um, perhaps that's something you want to be clued into, but it, it seems, but I see like, yeah, it seems to me like, you know, is if someone has a particular use case, the onus is on them to go and sit in all of these different uh, communities and try to get alignment. Uh, I don't really know how else to do it. Yeah, I don't think the onus should be on like one person. I guess that if there was an HPC working group, that would be a venue that all these people from you know the national labs, academia, that are vested in this use case would come together and think about the current specs and specs that don't exist in context of that use case. And, you know, worst case scenario, we accomplish nothing. We present ideas and for new projects or additional specs and OCI says, nope, that is like out of scope of what we're gonna doing, sorry. Oh, and by the way, we're also going to disband your working group because we can do that. But like the best case, we get, I mean, I guess I don't think that's going to happen because even if that does happen, but we bring people together um, and, and talking about more about OCI in this scope, that I think is a, an accomplishment. Um, and at the best case, we like make some kind of spec that may be specific to HPC, but maybe some of these HPC-ish things that are being run in industry on the cloud would also benefit too. So I guess I don't see that there's really any drawback to like trying it out. Yeah, I, I see the comment. I know we don't have the, the structure yet, but it, it's almost it's almost there. <laughs> I feel like I'm, uh, you know, having deja vu with this conversation because I think I brought it up with regards to build as well, like software build. Uh, and the response was the same thing. Um, there's. OCI itself doesn't have a working group structure. CNCF um, doesn't really have any kind of special interest. Whatever, where does build fit in? Um, yeah, but you know, at the CNCF level for runtimes, we do put together working groups, right? So confidential computing, the device stuff, COD. Um, there are there are groups, so it's. This, this sounds like another one that should be there if it's not already. Seems to me that, that that's a good place to start. Yeah. Amy, is it fair to say that the idea, or it, and Derek, is that the working group proposal that, that's been put forward is, is kind of like the OCI version of what's in CNCF? I think it's so, so right? Yeah, for, from my perspective, CNCF is better at fostering kind of these these communities, like mentioned, like the, well, I guess they're called tags now, not, not SIGs, but um, basically groups of individuals who have a very common interest. And from the working group proposal, it's defined to be tightly scoped. And you would picture like if you had um, one of these, uh, 
tags or SIGs or whatever they're called, uh, producing kind of ideas and brainstorming and then coming to CNCF and creating working groups, they basically you could use that to sponsor these individual work group items. Um, but at least how the working groups have been proposed today, they're, they're intended to be short-lived in lifespan. Whereas I, I don't think that like from a community perspective, you just don't put like a lifespan on the community. You just wanna potentially produce multiple different working groups out of that or multiple different changes. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of from what I gather what Vanessa was really saying, like having a working group that creates working groups. Um, if I understood that correctly. Yeah, I guess reading the, the proposal, I didn't really read it as like, this is just a quick, I mean, it, it could be a temporary thing, but I don't see why a working group, like if there's gonna be a consistent working group for something for a specific project in progress, I don't see why there couldn't be a working group just to kind of kickstart a couple of like projects for HPC, because we need, we need that structure. And I don't agree that this kind of thing fits with CNCF. CNCF is cloud native and, you know, <laughs> well, that does include containers, but, you know, HPC is not really the same thing as, as cloud native. At least I've, and there's probably there are, there are similarities, but I wouldn't call HPC cloud native. And I think it fits better with us, uh, with OCI uh, because OCI. And I suppose if it's just an issue of like the technicality that the working group needs to be like a specific scope project, well, then we'll find some other assembly method. And instead of, and we would then propose actual projects for OCI. But to me, that feels like it's not a very inviting thing. Like there's a bunch of people from the HPC community that want to be involved in this and to tell them, nope, you can't make a working group but you have to kind of come to us only with specific projects that feels kind of um, it feels very exclusionary, uh, especially because like it doesn't doesn't seem like there's any risk to giving people a chance, you know? Yeah, sorry. No, no, it wasn't a no. It was just pointing out that the the people that you need to be involved also include probably Kubernetes if you want to do schedule or plugins for your stuff. But yeah, if, if you're only talking about the features that are enabled by the standard, Right, the standard specs that we own in OCI, or some minor, ex, you know, extension from that, then that's fine. That's fair. Wasn't wasn't an open ask. <laughs> oh, okay. No, yeah, that well, document I think, has as you said, a ton of ideas. It, it, it comes just down to just like technicalities and structure. Like I don't, I don't think it's a, like I think we should figure out a way to do that. And that's kind of how the working groups came out in the first place. Is we wanted to do something and we didn't have a structure for it, so we created the structure. So. Like if we want to have the structure for it, like we can create the structure for it. It's not a matter of whether we should or shouldn't do it. Like um, as I said, like I think CNCF has more of a structure around community than, than OCI has traditionally. Um, and that's been kind of one of the problems we've had as, as the OCI community has grown. Um, so I, I, I don't think that's, that's unreasonable, but like if, if, the, if the point of it in the first place is that you need structure around it um, and that structure needs to be defined, then we need to make sure that it fits, I guess, is the point. Like, there's nothing stopping you today from creating a community around it and just, just doing it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about having that structure, I think. I'd also say real quick, don't read too much into the cloud native part of CNCF. They, they cover a lot of things that apply beyond just the cloud. It's just the patterns that apply to the cloud apply to a lot of people. Yeah, I just, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I think it's better scoped for OCI. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah. suppose it could be CNCF too. When we're talking specs and like what belongs in the metadata and distribution spec and that kind of stuff, yeah, that's that feels like OCI to me. But if we're talking about a build service, that might be something on CNCF, and so we just might have something that's bridging two groups. There can be overlap with some of those things too. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, would it be since I haven't participated in these, I don't know if, what sort of the regular pattern here. Have you had people come in and kind of give a broad kind of overview of like this is how we're using, you know, kind of container technologies within this space, and here's sort of unique 
requirements that emerge and you know some of those may overlap with the specs and trying to touch on those because i think it we could easily give a you know a presentation or two along those lines and i think it, it might help orient others on the on the group just to sort of see what what's going on I and mean, we've had like kind of the wide range of here's a specific thing we want to add because X, Y, and Z, so there's some context added to a, specific, a very specific addition to the spec, or here's a wide ranging scenarios on something we'd like to do, or here's some new th new enhancements to existing stuff. So all of that is, you know, kind of the range of stuff that's come up. Um, okay. I mean, sometimes it, it could be as simple as a routing to, hey, here's a group that's already working on it. There was a, a thing a couple of weeks ago where uh, the person came with something and I think it was Phil identified a team that was already working on it. Okay. And actually, it was the TOBA pre-COVID, I think it was, that we actually started trying to figure out, like, how do you identify what goes, what would be good for OCI versus CNCF? And in that aspect, it was more around, um, did you need mark? Did you need a lot of coverage from a lot of people in marketing support? Like, what kind of project was it? Is it a project where lots of people are going to contribute and you want to be on the, the landscape and so forth versus there's a couple of people working on it that, you know, a dozen more implement it and then the whole world consumes it. I mean, you know, there's not that many people that get into the image and the runtime and the distribution spec, but, you know, find something in CNCF that doesn't touch that as a result. Um, so there's a little bit of filtering in that, but I don't think we did anything around the working groups filtering. Yeah, I'm thinking, Steve, you're probably better to talk about this than most of us. When we are taking distribution from Docker and moving that over into CNCF, was there a thought of whether it belonged in OCI at that point? Because it's very similar to a lot of stuff we're doing over here, but it's not a spec, it's an implementation. So I'm just wondering if that was kind of the dividing line. That was one of them. Um, there's been a lot of, I mean, others should speak to it also, I think that OCI was more around specs and CNCF more about reference implementations, but then we have we have some implementations in OCI and whether that's something people would redo again, that, you know. But yeah, I think yeah, I think OCI one of the has a little longer filter. history there. Huh? OCI has a little longer history there because it it started, I think, either before or around the same time as CNCF. I mean, I, I think if OCI was created today, it probably would have been created as like a something sub of CNCF specifically around like specifications. Um, but yeah, at the time it was specification and reference implementation. But over time, most implementations have gone into CNCF because there's not just one implementation of things. Like at the time it was run C, but now there's a lot of kind of alternatives to run C. So it, it doesn't make sense to just have like uh, one thing that's blessed by the, uh, blessed by OCI. Like, the distribution is definitely like that as well. It's just one implementation. There's there's a lot of different ones out there. Yeah, it, it could be that it's nicely split. It could be that um, like an actual kind of spec is designed here, but then for an actual implementation, then we go to CNCF to actually implement it. So we don't kind of create something that, as you just said, and then like bless it, like this is the implementation. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll that's, see a that's lot how of thinking, yeah. That's how I was thinking from the OCI. So for fun with history, my first OCI meeting was uh, DockerCon 2016 in the upper room when everybody met and got together and, and then tag along as I could. And then life, personal, yeah, personal life got in the way of some things and being able to get back in this past uh, few months have been really fun with everybody. But I take it, Vanessa, the same way where you know, we're, we're kind of saying with OCI, we want to make sure interfaces are uh, standardized. And so can we have a standardized interface for uh, Slurm, for SGE that they can go back and work with and that's compliant. And then as a working group, we can be out of maybe, you know, cloud, you know the Cloud Native Foundation type of approach too. So, you know, I see it that way too as well. Exactly. Because I mean, at the end of the day, the implementations are going to be in those schedulers, right? Or it's going to be a plugin of some sort. Um, the implementation won't be with an OCI, but the spec will be. Yeah, you're going to see you that. That's sort of the some... question, right? When you talk, you start talking about adding another specification, then we got to get, you know, some permission and approval for the new spec. 
OCI has a limited balance, you know, limited balance of what we're trying to work on. And that's why when you mentioned Kubernetes, I was like, well, yeah, there's already some work going on on adding new plugins for that scheduler. <laughs> I just happen to know, the, you know, a few of the features and caps that are being worked on. So it's like, okay, we're, but we're going to pull this over and, and do it in OCI and come up with a standard for Well, plugins. that was just an example were, because they yeah, used right. to have a cluster called Nero that was Kubernetes. It was just an right. example. I was trying to say that, you know, in HPC, we're not just like old school, you know, dinosaurs. <laughs> we also I see. You know, I see you, you, you want to work in tech? Is, though. <laughs> yes, I am a dinosaur. I, I realized this. That's why I paused when I was thinking. That's <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of us on both sides of the fence. So no matter which side we put a working group together on, advertise on the other side, and you'll see the same faces yep. on both, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be the same people either way. <laughs> I mean, I think just yeah, you know, the suggestion would get a group of people together that want to collaborate on it and work on some proposals. And if you need some some structure and cover, that's you know that's what Amy and Chris and others are you know we're, we're trying to set up you know because LF kind of spans both. And I think it would you know, figure out what it is that you want to accomplish, get the people, and then what are the gaps. And that that uh, PR ninety nine kind of starts to outline. How do you define the group in a way? And obviously that's a PR, there's a discussion still on it. Um, I would focus on what you want to achieve first and then figure out how to, where, where, where to fit the structure. That would be my, okay. my two students. So would you recommend opening a PR? So I, I guess one, the first question is when is this PR 99 expected to be kind of like finalized, merged, or should I just kind of go ahead and start putting something together with that in mind? But not necessarily waiting for it. I would say find the people, like find the group of people that you want to work together. And if you want to write- I actually a, already a, have a small list. I'm going to find more, um, but I, you know, I've already started right? doing that. So would you recommend putting together um, basically that proposal? And then maybe in the proposal, we'll just kind of put down, I can kind of reiterate some of these ideas and projects. And then on the PR, we can kind of discuss like what that looks like for a working group. If that's what helps you facilitate the team to come together, like I, I put one together for the reference type stuff as when this whole thing was coming up with the work groups, just to try to, to test it out. And it helped me actually provide some clarity and some scope and some things. So if that helps you get your group together, because obviously the purpose of a working group is you have a bunch of people with varied opinions and you're trying to find some solidity, solidity around a focus. So if that can help facilitate that, then I would use it as a tool, not as a, a blocker, I guess would be my suggestion. Yeah, so it, you would be okay with, for example, putting together a working group that has, for example, three goals. It doesn't have to be just like a, a, a simple, a single goal. Hmm. I wonder, Vanessa, if it would work, you know, if CNCF is a better place to create a special interest group, we could always create sort of the SIG HPC component. And we could use that to say, hey, let's discuss amongst ourselves, what are things we wanna prioritize for the OCI community, bubble those up, and then those might become more concrete kind of working group proposals or something like that. Um, I still think it would be useful for us to be able to come in and kind of give some overview presentations just to, to help you understand design choices we've made in our environments and, you know, why that happened. And, you know, it might help you think through, oh, this is, you know, this applies to other communities besides HPC. Um, but that sounds great. Yeah, so would, that, would, would, would the group be amenable to hearing presentations, more presentations? I mean, I think you have people here that are obviously passionate about this space and we work on various pieces of it and you know, sometimes seeing somebody do a presentation spawns an idea that, oh, what if we did this? That can make up something simpler that you might not have been thinking about. Or it might be something that, hey, if you would just add this, look at how powerful what you're doing can be. I mean, like this is kind of how we did some of the stuff back in the artifact stuff is like we were working on how to implement Helm in, in registries and we saw a pattern. We were kind of experimenting with some ideas and then we came to this group and said, hey, what if we did this? And then that conversation iterated a lot 
And if we had working groups then, we probably would have formed a working group then. But the idea was, it, it wasn't a specific, like the working group, I think that what we're, what, what we're proposing here is, it is a more actionable thing that has a results in a spec or, or some kind of output of a project. Um, whereas I think what the conversation was, was if it's a long-term tag, I suppose a special interest group, I don't know the difference, but the, that, you know, you could do that in CNCF and then say, hey, in CNCF, we've got a bunch of people. Hey, if we only did this one thing in run C or distribution, look what we can get. Hey, okay, there's a working group to make that ask. Or if there is a larger spec that you want to drive, that's a new thing, that would be the out, that could be the output of that group that comes over here and says, hey, we want a working group to do this thing. Here's a special interest group over in uh, tag, the CNCF that's been forming it, that's sponsoring it. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, so Shane, do you think that making an HPC SIG that is sort of most appropriate as opposed to trying to find a like a container HPC community that already exists and bringing the topic there? That, I think that could work as well. And we've got, you know, there's a, a CJ's, you know, community he has, there's a couple of others that, you know, there's certainly the ones that through Exascale, ECP, but I, I think we'd want it broader than that. But we could probably build out from, from there if we needed to. Um, it's probably worth looking at CNCF and then the, it's the research computing or something like that and see if there's, if that's a good fit or not. I, th I think you're right that it's probably going to be overly broad and that might make it a little bit trickier to, to focus in. Yeah, I think if you get together and you have a set of some of the goals you want to accomplish, I think it'd be easier to, because maybe we could just immediately create some of the working groups and, and go from there as well okay. if, if there's some. Kind of high priority items that, that you already agree on that, that that you need to get in um but yeah i just i just sit i just want to make sure it's like from a if you want to maintain like a long-term community I, I think cncf has a better structure for that right now um i think i still kind of want to hear amy's opinion on on all of that where because she knows the rules and structures better than anyone but that's what I, what I <laughs> all right i'll shut back in i was letting everybody just kind of like like run around in this um so in large part like this could absolutely work within cncf um we do have an older working groups kind of thing in here but i'm much more likely to be able to see this as like a tag that focuses around how this would connect into a um kind of academic working group. This might also separately be part of that research group that I think it was Brandon. It was Brandon. I think it was Brandon. Um, yeah, Brandon Mitchell was talking about as well. Um, but also none of this has to be solved like today. Just getting the idea of, hey, we want to be able to like do this is good enough. And Derek, I, I don't know if I've completely cut you off. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think that sounds reasonable. Um, Shane, were you saying you'd want to give a presentation to OCI, or do you think we should hold off on that? I, you know, probably not in the next week or two. But I think we could try to get our, you know, we could convene. We could kind of think what points we think would be most important to bring up. And yeah, we I'd be happy to to help co-present something and present it. I, you know, I certainly know of a few things that come to mind that I'd want to just let others know about so they're aware of it. Yeah, and for the PR, for that. oh, sorry. Go and for the PR 99, um, I'm wondering, so hold on one second, I'm looking at it. That's exactly what I was gonna hope we were going to turn to, was like, hey, can we give some more feedback on this? Thanks. Yeah, I think there should be something stated that like this is for a like very this is not for like a community like a working group is not really a community a working group is like a group of people that want to get a specific thing done um because i that went right over my head um when i was reading about this working group thing <laughs> i think the goal is to to keep everything pretty tightly scoped and defined initially until we need more um if, if there's a lot of overlap with kind of tags in CNCF already, then it, it doesn't make too much sense because OCI is already kind of like a tag. It, it doesn't really exist in the same 
like it's it's more of like a sibling organization to CNCF, but in actuality, it's 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 more like more like a how the tags operate. It's it's smaller. We're very tightly scoped in terms of like what we're trying to do, and I think we're trying to prevent OCI from becoming too largely scoped in terms of like um, in in specific dimensions, like in terms of like um, the specifications, like we want to kind of grow out from what we have. Don't want to just like uh, gobble up a lot. And that's kind of what CNCF has done, and you know that. that yeah, and that that's that totally makes sense. But, um, my suggestion is just like in that document, if someone comes that is kind of like marginally familiar with OCI and they're reading it, it should just be very specific about that aspect of the working group. If that makes sense. And also, um, so okay, SIG is special interest group. You keep saying tag. What does tag mean? Amy. Yes, happy to help. So um, once upon a time, there were such things known as the special interest groups. We had both special interest groups in Kubernetes and in CNCF. People got very confused across the land about which thing belonged where. And so as of KubeCon um, in early May, we are now TAGS for CNCF. It is the technical advisory group. Oh, okay. yeah, just context tag means something very different to this group. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And like, it, it means I know, my brain's like containers, tags. <laughs> That's How does it even work? Yeah, I do have one question no. there. Like, yeah. is the advisory intended to advise, like, the extension of the, was it the TOC, TOB that oh, right. TOC. CNCF has? Over there, they have a TOC. And yes, their power flows from the TOC proper. Um, the TOC is the one that, like, says, We've convened this particular tag to be able to focus on whatever area it is. Um, there are co-chairs that run those particular groups, and then there are tech leads that kind of work around in there. Um, they're intended to be kind of longer term working, just like bodies. They're not really set up to be like the, we have a, kind of like a strike force around, like we want something really specific to happen and then go away. Like they, they like we, the storage tag has been running for years same with security and actually frankly because i've been here for years now they've been here for years now too so so um, the, yeah, the purpose ahead. of them though isn't necessarily like because i i know with like the the tag runtime the one i'm more involved in it's it's a lot of reviewing other projects and seeing which ones are recommend to the toc but is there other scope to it where you would say in this case like convene but you may review projects that you suggest to TOC, but you may also suggest working groups to OCI. I don't know how that's that's scoped. Oh, see, and that gets complicated because part of what's going on with like the uh, the tag structure that is totally different from where we'd be over in OCI is like um, they have projects that are actively working on trying to graduate. We don't tend to be able to have any structure here around like the certain levels and things that you get, um, so it's not really the same kind of attraction and. The, the same tone of voice. And part of what the tags were originally charged with was being able to come in and review projects and and then advise the TOC on fitness for, does this fit in cloud native? Um, and if it does, would you put it in sandbox? Would you put it in incubating? Where would you say this project lives and how likely is it to succeed? So that's very different, I think, Vanessa, from what you're maybe proposing here or thinking about. There, there are, though, working groups within CNCF, you know, associated with these tags for fixing holes across CNCF and, you know, pro various projects that are seen as high level. And there's some funding that comes with it and that sort of stuff. So, and, there, and you get communication. So it's sort of, it would, it would, it, would, it may help in this case, but it may not if you, if you guys don't want to work with it. That, you don't want to create a, a new working group, you know, associated with SIG runtime or whatnot, then that's fine. That's fair. Mostly, you just got to get the team together. That's yeah, I think, I think getting the team together, having the objectives, and then coming back to OCI could be a good place to go. And maybe at that point, it, it'd be more obvious whether it goes to... If you warn me I, for I when you're actually presenting this, I can try to be here and help advise you on like which path to go forward with. It it sounds like it's going to end up being like some structural things that really push it over the line for which one makes more sense. Yeah. 
I mean, a lot of these groups just get started and it's through that conversation you figure out what it is that you want to accomplish. And then based on those, you can figure out where to go and you maybe know, can help with routing and which direction to. And it might be both. Complicated. One is better. Please don't. I don't know if there's any specific structure that really defines this group, like as we're meeting today either. Like, I don't know how formal it necessarily needs to be. Like if we wanted to have a separate version of this group that's focused on specific topics, that's not necessarily a problem. I mean, I so said, I don't think we necessarily need like a TOB vote on scope and stuff just to, just to like add items to the calendar and set agendas. Right. Yeah, it's when there's a conflict that this, the things get tougher, when there's a, a differing opinions in different work groups, right? If everybody's not, if the team's not together, then, 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 then you might need help. And that's where OCI or, you know, one of these other groups can help. Obviously, high, high performance computing has been a lot around for a long time. There's a lot of groups out there, a lot of entrenched groups, and that may, that may not be what you guys want to work with. Cool. Yeah, definitely in the HPC community, um, I mean, people are pretty skeptical of containers. I mean, you, you sort of have like two sides, I guess, um, even though containers are, are, are usually used in, in most centers. Yep. But we're definitely seeing traction and pickup. So I, you know, and it's a, it's a changing landscape. So I think that there's growing, growing interest. Eventually, the the dinosaurs will retire, and the others will take over. They just come back as Vanessa It's just a cycle that continues. And the cycle continues. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, Vanessa, I'll sync up with you offline and we can strategize a little bit about what makes the best sense. Yes, we will strategize like that word. <laughs> I just noticed Stephen so Day's if, on this call. Huh? So I just noticed Stephen Day's here. Yeah, are, uh, we, are we gonna see you regularly? Oh. Are we like coming back? Um, I, I've been popping on. You guys weren't here last week at this time. I, I have a, I have meetings all day, and I'm able to get get a few minutes in per week. So, um, hey Steve. Yeah, yeah. So just saying hi. Um, I read through Vanessa's proposal. Looks looks fine. I don't know if you want me to go comment it topic by topic or anything like that. But um, I think the the one thing to divide. Um, I didn't hear the whole conversation, but I think the one thing to figure out is like, all right, like figure out what's truly APC, uh, HPC, like what's unique to HPC versus not unique to HPC. Um, and then what's specification changes or specification requirements versus like what's a service requirement, right? Like, like a build service might be a good CNCF project, for example, whereas like a or an orchestrator for fetching, like I like that idea. Like that could be built into Container D or something like that, or some other project in CN CNCF. And, but maybe there's like some changes we need in the OCI spec to make the like communication between that orchestrator work or something. I don't know. I'm kind of pulling it out there. Um, oh, and then the arbitrary blob ones. Uh, yeah, we've been doing that for years. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I actually put that down <laughs> intentionally because I, I know you've been doing it for years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there was, I think Brandon Mitchell here linked um, to, uh, I think it was John Johnson's request um, where it's just descriptor level tags, which I think is a good idea, probably. <laughs> Cat picks in there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, that looks good. And then um, what was the other one? Container metadata. Um, there's the, so, so, you're aware of the um, the OCI like uh, annotations. Um, are there missing? Is the, is the issue that there's missing annotations or like like? Oh, you don't need to answer now. Just like we can figure out which annotations are truly missing and where they, which objects maybe maybe there's certain objects that we don't have annotations for. That might be good to to kind of figure out. So, and then the yeah. blob uncompressed sizes. That one's tough. Like I'm. I'm always I, like I. It's a, it's a weird opinion. Like I think that compressed layers are kind of a something we shouldn't have done. Maybe, um, 
and just let like transport and storage compression take over. Um, Cause that would be, I think that would be generally better cause then you could calculate on disk sizes. Um, but if there's like a proposal, you have like an easy way to do it. Um, that'd be interesting. I like the only problem there is the difficulty in um, calculating that size and then like, do you have to do a mesh? So like on one machine or the other, it could have a very different disk usage profile, right? Depending on like whether it's with layers or like with ButterFS, like do we have a way of that's like OCI platform agnostic to calculate the disk usage or do we have disk usage per storage methodology? Um, that, was a, that was the thing, the line of thinking I had, um, but like adding up the uncompressed layer sizes and or reporting um, or just turning off compression and going to transport compression are both kind of options there that, that might make that a little bit easier. Um, I assume this is for planning out disk usage on a individual node before you unpack the image. Yeah, before you yeah. explode your node because there's not enough disk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice if you know because you can put a limit reader. If it says like, oh, I'm 10 bytes and when I'm unpacked, I'm 20 bytes, you can limit the unpacking to 20 bytes and if it goes over um, because of some nefarious magic, um, you could really limit that. So, um, yeah, but all in all, I think it's, you know, there's some good stuff in here. Cool. Thanks. And I agree um, that we will, that we're going to sort of come together and figure out, kind of break it down into pieces. What could fit into a current spec? What could be a new spec? What's better in CNCF for a project? I think, um, I think Shane and I will kind of assemble a team and, and figure out how to do that. And then um, I, I won't go into detail about this, but for metadata, I think there's sort of a larger, it, it's much larger than just like creating labels. I think um, I'm kind of thinking also about like API compatibility. So um, that's something that I'm working on right now at, at the lab. Uh, we're, we're looking at binaries, but I also think there's a use case for containers. So I don't have like an answer at this point, but you know, you'd want to be able to take a container and then say, okay, is this ABI compatible? Is there ABI compatibility? And the strongest example from the HPC community is just uh, with like MPI libraries, which you have to get it like exactly right, the two versions on the host and the container, or else it won't work. <laughs> this came up in ARM um, with, because there's like systems that, that are like 64 bit, but they have 32 bit pointer types and and so your the kernel the the kernel abbey actually changes in between um, the different container types, um, and this also came up in the context of of Windows containers as well. Um, so it might be good to look at what was done there at the platform level, and see if that is totally like different from what you were thinking. And then, um, or it's just it might just be insufficient. But um, like like I assume you have some sort of library that's provided by the host system that when you run the container it's expected to be present like a like a certain abby version or a certain library that you get then you mount into the container and try to run your that's code right. against yeah that's right yeah so yeah th this is a this is a, a problem um yeah I, I would start looking at at the arm in windows containers to see what was done with abby there um and then kind of work work backwards if that makes sense see kind of what the delta is versus what you guys were thinking yeah yeah vanessa i mean i'd be happy to join you guys on that talk because it's been a while for me but it was um, at the time benchmark with open mpi and then mpi chameleon too so there was like you said there's definitely um, a lot of configuration that takes place and everything mm -hmm. and in most yeah, of the systems we use the same kind of tricks you know so we're mapping in things from the host system that are optimized for that hardware. And so how to make sure the container and the runtime sort of know how to marshal all of that is, is helpful. On that uncompressed size, did you mean the, the, the size of the actual file or the size on disk given, given a certain layout, right? Well, I mean, like once you like, so I, I guess it's easier to talk about singularity the way Singularity works is it basically downloads the layers and then just explodes them onto the file system. And we don't know what size it's going to be after it's kind of exploded like that. Um, and it would be really great if we could.
Yeah. Okay. So so you probably, thing you like probably need a, trans a translation then between the the actual bytes of the file and the bytes that it'll take to store it on the, on the disk that you're storing it on. Yeah, it's it's unpacked size. If you said a, a DU, you know, recursive on that, what would it be kind of thing? Yeah. yeah, I can't tell you how many times where I've had someone that's, you know, developing a container and they're doing kind of, some kind of multi-stage builds, so they want to get it small and they, you know, they, they're inside of it and they do DU to see the size and they look at Docker Hub and they're like, what? Like this is this is this is not this doesn't match up. I don't I don't even know what that size means um, because you sort of assume the size you see on Docker Hub is like the actual size, but it's it's not. <laughs> Yeah, this problem is complicated. <laughs> there's, there's a there's a reason it's not there. That's all. Because <laughs> even yeah. when you do du inside of your container, it's kind of a lie, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of some of the work we're doing with continuity to try to like at least come up with a per layer you could see what the file system is supposed to look like, but at the end of the day, like it depends on your file system and what the actual usage is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like maybe we come up with like a system agnostic way of saying like, this is what the maximum usage for right. this container would be. And we can come up with some upper bounds and an algorithm for getting to it. Um, and then you could probably do a post push, add some post push metadata when you push the manifest. But that'll change the solution. shot. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's uh. But, but then at least it would be accurate for the file systems that are using, right? So, well, for that instance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what? Yeah, you you end up might having to, having to post process the layers too, right? And like look at the tar records yeah. without landing it on disk. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Come up with something, propose it, and then we'll figure we'll figure out what what the best. We you know we can figure out a couple of options, and then um, walk it back from yeah, there. Do some iteration. Yeah. I think maybe the references work would probably come up there. Because um, yeah, some of the signatures and being able to attach some of this other type of metadata. Um, this would be interesting well, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's the a, that's metadata area is where there's maybe a lot of potential because there's information we'd like to start capturing, but rather than it being sort of an ad hoc or let's throw a label in this way, if there was some standard for it, I think then other tool providers could start to adopt that and implement it. Um, I think that could be very fruitful. And just to be clear, this isn't like a uh, size pre and post compression. This is expanded and applied size that you're looking for. I think that's what she was talking about with the size stuff, right, Vanessa? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. But on the metadata, there's other types of metadata that would be useful to be able to capture for images that schedulers could then make use of that to know what resources they can put it on, for example. But like does this image require a GPU or does it require an architecture with this particular, not just family, but maybe, you know, particular feature, you know, CPU feature. We have a lot of cases that kind of pop up like that. And I don't think it's unique to HPC, but it's more, maybe it's more strongly felt with HPC. A, a lot of that should already be supported in the platform type. It's we possible. just don't say exactly how to do it. Because because they're so different, but it's very vendor specific. Okay, and so it's possible that if we just get a little more direction, some of these are, you know, already solved problems. But uh, you might find some gaps. Yeah, let me see if I can get you a link. So with the last three minutes, I don't think we're going to be able to get to Nisha's bullet points here. Is that something we're 
comfortable doing next week, Nisha? Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to know what the status of all of those uh, yeah. manifest things are. I just want to say really quickly that uh, the, mm, the recent uh, US government executive order is weighing on me right now. And I would love to be able to stick an S-bomb somewhere. Steve, I think that's your cue. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was curious when you were looking for this one. I mean, obviously there's this concept of how to support reference types and I've actually been working on a, a paper and talk and examples of the prototypes we've done around the uh, reference type work because the other one that's come up, there's just a bunch of secure supply chain artifacts that people wanna be able to add. And then do you change the existing artifacts or can you add to them? And that's kind of the experience we went through with Notary. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I could talk about where we are today, obviously not in just two minutes. I mean, other than uh, there are some reference examples out there and uh, of how this works and we're kind of actively working on uh, enabling uh, that approach that you can add content to a registry and you don't need to know about that new content. You can say, give me all the reference ex reference types to a particular thing and you can get back the signature, you can get back an SBOM, then you can ask for the signature to the SBOM. Uh, one of the more recent ones that come up was, what are the scan results? Like, can I go and ask an image, hey, what are, this, what are the latest scan results uh, for this image? Um, and we would be able to support that as a reference type as well. The big question there is then what's the, the schema of that? Um, but there is an example of uh, an open SSF group that's been working on that. So okay. I, I, I saw your, your thing coming. I saw your thing this, uh, this afternoon, just as I was prepping for this meeting. So I, I had some demos I can show today, but obviously not left in one minute. So we can talk about yeah. it next week if you want, or I'm trying to create a recording so that people can just watch it on their own time. Is that There's a project here? called Crane that uses so, some sort of well-known tag location that you might have a look at that would be perfect for this. Because a lot of these things you don't want to have to do when you actually push the image. You, you want to put them in later. So you don't want to bundle them into the image itself. Um, so no, I wasn't looking at bundling it into the image. But one of the issues that, um, well, we're at time now. There are, uh, I mean, I actually like the whole like image index down. It's almost like uh, if you needed to move, you know, your constellation of artifacts, you can if you just take the root of the tree um, and all of its references. Um, but I can also see the attraction of just keeping them well, uh, keeping them in well-known tags is well and good if the tags are well-known. <laughs> um, but I get the feeling that we would be, um, there are a lot of artifacts that need to be attached, like that need to be, uh, you know, that need to travel around with the image. So um, well-known tags may not be interoperable from like client to client. Yeah. It, just for I'm the sake of time, Nisha, because this will this is a really meaty conversation. So why don't we just queue this up for next week so people can get off to their meetings that, for the next hour chunk? Yeah, we I can know. easily so, go but, for thirty minutes on this. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I mean uh, I just wanted to know like where people are at right now, but it seems like it's still ongoing discussion. I am happy to push that to next week. Yeah, it's a good discussion to have. Yeah, thanks for, for providing the link to the uh, reference to S bombs and being published by the White House. That's very interesting. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks for various I know. <laughs> it's like when I, finally. When somebody people first come. emailed me that there was an executive order. I was like, which VP? Is that DevTiv? Is it Azure? Like, yeah, and somebody else mentioned something about government. I'm like, wait, the government? Wait, what? So, um, we all know what yeah. technology looked like in Congress uh, over the last couple of years. So yeah, but it's good to have focus. So um, it says presidential it action. It doesn't say order, but then it says order, executive order. So it's a little confusing. Yeah, there's a difference if it's an action versus an order. But we'll t I'll take a look. Anyway, we'll see everybody next week. Enjoy the Thank weekend. Thanks everyone for a good discussion today.
Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. See you next week. Happy Memorial Day. You have a good one.